So you talk about um, studying with the kami, but you always tell, uh, you recommend that we uh, check with our inner teacher. So are those two, how, how? Why, why are two phrases? How, how are those phrases? Different? Because if I talk about the kami, it's this lofty kind of unknown Japanese mystical guga. But I think most everybody gets, you know, you have an inner sense of what's going on for you. I call it your inner teacher, call it your higher self, call it whatever. I think it makes it more grounded or more accessible to people. To me, yeah, they're the same thing. Uh, in the sense that um, when you start to drop into that universal connection, who you know yourself as is no longer your limitations. or You start to realize that there's no way that you're not part of the universe. There's no way to take yourself out of the universe. There's no way that you can really separate yourself except in the distinction of, of language. And so as you start to feel that universe talking to you, listening to the universe, whatever words we use, uh, you start to receive ideas and information that doesn't exist. Einstein did it, Gandhi did it, Osensei did it, Jesus did it, all the great teachers have, who, all the great painters, all the great, they have brought stuff into birth that never existed before. I say it came from the kami, the divine spirit, the divine force, but if I say divine, like our friend, I can't remember, Jason or whoever it was, one of the guys in, in uh, Switzerland. Switzerland said, you know, I don't, I don't like the word divine, I'm an atheist, you know, and I thought, Okay, divine to me is like really good ice cream, <laughs> you know. Trying to, trying to find some way to make the words playful. And, uh, and I think we did a lot of work there with them in, in the way they were talking with each other to try and say, you know, words are abstract. They're not, the Tao that can be spoken is not the true Tao, you know. Anyhow, go ahead with your story. Uh, we were talking and uh, I uh, just, um, I don't know if I was asking permission or... Um, well, I think he was asking if I'd be offended. I don't think he was asking me if he could, but, you know, <laughs> would, would I mind, would, you know, was it, was it going to hurt my feelings or whatever? And, and really more from the standpoint of uh, adopting the language, because I know you think I should study with whoever I think I should study with. So um, I... Uh, I actually, what did I say? I said... I think I'm going to uh, be come deshi to the Aikikami, would you mind? And to me, you know, it's, it's my imagination, that's what I hoped, that's what I hoped I was teaching from day one. And I said to these guys, and I say whenever I go anywhere outside of Aikido of Marin, uh, I usually open up with the idea that, you know, you have a sense of what's right and what's true for you. I call it your inner teacher, call it what you will. Uh, never lose your connection. Never surrender your connection with your inner voice or your inner feeling or who you are uh, in your connection to the divine or your direct connection to, to the totality or your sense of being the whole. As soon as that goes away to study with someone else, I said, because if I say something and your inner teacher is going, yeah, that's, yeah, that's true, well then your inner teacher is saying it. And if I say something and something in you is going, you know, I don't, I don't know about that. I, I said, never surrender your inner teacher because of how many dons I have or how much older I am or how much more money I've made or less. It's not the issue. And if your inner teacher is going, gee, I don't, I don't know about that. Let me think about that. Well, then think about it.